we gotta understand that this all happened in one night, one long night. The writing in this film. Malcolm and Marie to me are a perfect example of Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Cece and in today's video we are talking about the movie on Netflix called Malcolm and Marie. Here are my thoughts. So yesterday I was watching a video put out by Shan Booty who is a sex expert. If you're not familiar with her work you need to check out my girl Shan. She is absolutely knowledgeable in her field and she's really like a big sister on the internet for us millennials or even what is it Gen Z, Gen X. She's there for the people okay and it really inspired me because shoot I reacted very strongly to the movie like first of all I'm just gonna flat out call it it was an amazingly amazingly produced movie the acting was excellent the writing was powerful if you're a movie buff like me i mean the references and the shout outs to you know theater and film and just movie history was phenomenal you know what let me pause right here if you have not watched a movie I need you to pause this video save it to your playlist and come right back because I don't want to ruin it for you I'm not gonna be responsible I won't be but for you who has watched the movie what is your biggest thing like what is it that you reacted the most strongly to comment below for me whoo, child. okay I can appreciate that the movie shows a condensed view of a long-term relationship and just like in theater it's meant to be provocative it's made to you know make you go on a journey of really high highs and really low lows we gotta understand that this all happened in one night one long night of arguing and making up and arguing and making up and as shannon was describing Give some grace to the fact that very few of us are taught how to effectively communicate in romantic relationships, especially during times of distress. In a healthy relationship, there are moments when, you know, the worst of us comes out and we just attack the other, especially when we wait too long to address certain issues. Like, just don't wait. That's a big takeaway. Don't wait to address something that's been bothering you. Bring up something that bothers you as soon as you can don't let it linger so that first of all you don't blow out of control on your partner and also resentment is not healthy you actually pay for it physically it affects your health and your mental health so I understand that in a healthy relationship you need the positive criticism and the healthy competition but I could never condone the insults, degrading, shaming, and flat out abusive exchanges that these two were having. Malcolm and Marie to me are a perfect example of a relationship where both are very strong-minded, feel a lot, like emotionally intelligent, very well-spoken, oh my goodness, the writing again the writing in this film. The way they were able to describe and just articulate their feelings and emotions and even just experience in the relationship was, however, when you're using jabs and personal attacks and just borderline under the belt comments just because you're angry, I clock out. I clock out. <coughs> Ooh, ooh. Hi, yeah, you can call that. I do think that there's a limit to how aggressive and insensitive someone can get when they're angry towards their loved ones. Like, if I truly, truly love you and you say you truly, truly love me, there's certain things that just won't come out your mouth and won't come out my mouth. And if they do, you need time, I need time to recover from that and heal because shoot, words can hurt and cut much more deeper than an actual physical attack or abuse. So to wait for a relationship to get to the point that the abuse is physical to me is very dangerous. There are flags to watch and I'm speaking, well, I should have said that at the top of the video. I'm speaking from experience when it comes to having lived and survived an emotional, spiritual, mentally abusive relationship. I have 
haven't spoken about it openly yet on my channel, but it's coming, so subscribe and turn your notification bell on so you know whenever I post it. Also in Shannon's commentary, she mentioned that the word toxic is tossed around a lot or too easily. And the very last thing that I took from this film is that people need to redefine what a toxic relationship is. I agree with that to a certain extent. Um, I do think that we're quick to say toxic whenever we see people just arguing. And arguments or disagreements are part of a healthy couple, a healthy relationship. The cutoff is when, again, you get to shaming, degrading, name calling, just under the belt comments like, don't bring up her past and how she used to self-harm in this conversation. It has nothing to do with it. Talking about you gonna snap her like a twig? What? You would not find me. You could not find me. And if you found me, I'd be out the next morning. I'm so sorry, not sorry. In the comment section on Shannon's video, there was a reference to the need to include what to watch out for when it comes to emotional and mental abuse. And I think that's very, very critical. If you're gonna talk about healthy negotiation skills and just speaking up in a relationship or healthy arguing, then you do in the same vein, in the same breath, mention what it's like to, you know, experience the other extreme. When is it actually bad? Because we cannot condone that. Too many, oh my goodness, too many people, women and men, non-binary, are going through pain silently in relationships because they are misinformed and they think that what they're experiencing is actually a healthy and loving relationship when it's not. It's not and they tolerate over and over and over the name calling, the degrading, the you know self-esteem crushing treatment from their partners because they don't know better. So I strongly believe when people were reacting to the movie and using the term toxic when describing the relationship, I strongly believe they were referring to the high intolerable level of abuse by both of the parties. I think both Malcolm and Marie were abusive in their own way. Malcolm straight up did come across to me as someone who's very egocentric and narcissistic. However, he does have moments of vulnerability, which is why I think the movie is phenomenal because a good performance to me, acting wise, is when you can have your audience fall in love even with the bad guy. <laughs> You know how we all fell for Joker? Just because you could see his heart, you could see his sensitivity, and you understood his history and his past and his traumas. It just made you connect to someone who's actually evil. But understanding where they came from and their background, that just made you somewhat relate, which is so weird to say. How could you relate to someone who's so evil? But yes, we all have good and evil within ourselves. And unless we want to face ourselves and heal, shoot, you can be the Joker, you could be Malcolm. And I definitely saw parts of myself in Marie. I think she is very smart, very strong, but she does have emotional dependence. And if you don't know about this book, it's called Codependent No More. It's about being in a relationship or just very close to a family member or a friend who actually is toxic. I'll put a link for the book in the description box. But yeah, guys, that wraps up my thoughts and assessment of Malcolm and Marie, the movie on Netflix, and also reacting to the video that Shan Booty has recently posted. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what your takeaway was and how do you define emotional and, and mental abuse? How do you define a healthy, growth-centered relationship? The movie is disproportionately much more intense than the average relationship, but I think we do have lessons that we can take away from it and apply in our own lives, in our own relationships or future relationships. That's my piece, so thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Remember to stand tall in life and in love. Mwah.